Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at file navigation in NeoVim. Um, since the editor is so extensible, there are a ton of different ways to move from file to file in NeoVim. And so today I wanted to cover my preferred approach and also contrast that with some other existing options to sort of give you a better perspective of why I'm doing what I'm doing. The default experience is not super amazing. Um, so what you would do is you would open up NeoVim here, and this is just my blank NeoVim open. You would you would probably type in colon ex here to open up netrw, which is the default file explorer for any of them. And honestly, NetRW is not that bad. Like, I actually kind of like it. I would never use it because there are just better things to use, um, but it's not as bad as some people say. You can just kind of click on these uh, different directories with enter and you can go back with minus. You just find a file and click enter on it and you're there. The problem with NetRW is that it's a little bit slow when you have a larger, uh, more nested project. And so whenever you are, have a very nested project and you're like, oh, where is this? Where is this file? Is it in this one? No. Uh, is it in this one? No. And you know, you can get better with learning the shortcuts like this, um, but still you're going to have that sort of searching through directories kind of issue. And so to combat that, what a lot of people use is telescope to navigate to different files. And I'm the same way. I think telescope is absolutely necessary for any reasonable configuration. And if you don't know what Telescope is, it's essentially just a plugin that gives you this cool interface where you can type in the name of something and it will fuzzy find an entire list. So I can search up like plugin here and I can see every time there, there is plugins inside of my project um, and I can narrow it down by doing Rust here. And now I'm in my Rust file. Um, and it's really, really nice because you can do it for more than just file navigation. So going a little off topic, you can like live grep for every time that I use um, vim.o here. And this is every instance I use vim.o. Um, I can also do it across document symbols, which will work better in a larger file. So as you can see, I can see every time I use a string in this file, for example. So telescope is absolutely essential to add to your configuration if you want to have fast navigation. And so now what a workflow would look like is you would open up NeoVim, and then you would open up telescope and then just type in the name of the file you're looking for. And now you're in that file. Another route that I see people go a lot, and especially with people that use distributions of NeoVim like LazyVim and NVChat and stuff like that, is that they rely very heavily on a tree view or some sort of sidebar that displays all of the files and directories. Um, and this is okay, especially when you're transitioning from VS Code, this is extremely intuitive, um, but it is very slow. And I'm saying that as someone that actually used it myself. When I came over from VS Code, I religiously had my sidebar open at all times. I guess it made me feel comfortable in my own code base, um, but it wasn't a very efficient way to move around files. And just to kind of show you, I actually put it in my config temporarily here. So we have NeoTree, which I think is a pretty popular one. And basically now you have this cool sidebar and this is looking more like a VS Code type of editor here where we have this. I can even double click on these directories to open them and I can like scroll to a file, click on that. Um, but you can also do it keyboard centric here. So I could go to mapping go to Rust, um, et cetera, et cetera. This is an okay setup, but again, it's not very efficient whenever you are trying to search for something specifically, especially when you have a project like this where you have like 30 files in a directory. Now you have to just scan them like this with your eyes and you can you, you can filter. So I could like do slash theme um, and apparently it actually jumped to the file without, you know, prompting me, but whatever, even with these, it's generally just kind of a hassle to like have to toggle these directories and then go between them and, and expand and collapse directories and, and remember to collapse them when you're done using them and having to switch back and forth between buffers like this. Not my favorite way to do things. Um, and so I would generally say for most people, if you can get away from the sidebar, then get away from it as fast as you can. Take it from someone that used to rely on it. Okay, but I'm not an insane person and I understand that you do sometimes need to see like an overview of your project and see where things are located, just generally speaking, so you can understand where to maybe put a new file or something like that. And that's where I would say that it would be better to actually put an entire file manager at your fingertips rather than something like a sidebar with limited functionality. Um, and so this is where I would recommend using something like yazi.envim. If you don't know what yazi is, it's actually a full-fledged standalone application that's uh, sort of like a um, finder or file explorer replacement. Um, so if I open up a separate tab in Tmux, here, I can just open up Yazi on its own. And as you can see, it's just a full blown um, file manager. I actually use this on my Arch Linux setup, by the way, and I don't have to ever use any 
any GUI file explorer because it's just that powerful. Now, just imagine that sort of power just built into your editor. You kind of just gain an additional program superpower here. Now, this might not be the Unix philosophy packaging an entire other executable inside of your program, but now I get like extremely quick navigation and I also get this feeling of cohesiveness. So I can use Yazi outside of NeoVim and I can use it inside of NeoVim. So it kind of feels like my terminal is now just like some super program, kind of, you know, Emacs people are smiling right now, uh, but it kind of feels like my terminal is like a mini operating system where everything is sort of intertwined together. And I kind of like that idea. And I do think that, yes, this is better than having a tree view because it has so many cool features. Um, for example, built-in Zeoxide support with a fuzzy finder in here. So I could just go to a directory using this here. Um, it also has things like these previews that are rapid fire previews. Um, and it has a ton of other extra features that you get basically for free just by using this file manager here. Another file navigation option that is gaining a lot of popularity recently is oil.envim, which if you don't know what it is, it's a plugin that allows you to create, edit, and move around files as if your file system is just a regular text buffer in NeoVim, um, which is kind of hard to visualize, but if you just you know, actually open up oil, you can see what I'm talking about. So I could just create a file here and I could just press like O as I would in like a regular text buffer. And I can just do like test.txt and I can do colon W to write and it will actually create my test.txt. And you have a nice little floating mode here so I could like go into my directories and do all of my editing here. I could rename files and go back and forth. So it's very similar to netrw in that regard, but it gives you a lot more editing power because it's essentially just a regular text buffer with all of the features of NeoVim inside of it. And I think that using oil.envim is a perfectly fine solution. And the only reason that I don't use it is because yazi.envim exists. Um, I actually moved from oil to yazi, but that is an absolute valid solution. Okay, so now that we've established my preferred workflow for file navigation in NeoVim, so let's actually test it out and like make a little skeleton C project to sort of show you the different things that I would do when making it. Um, so the first thing I would do whenever I'm making a C project is I need to set up some directory structure. And honestly, this doesn't really need to be in NeoVim. So what I would probably do is just to make their, um, you know, include lib source bin and just make those four directories. There's no reason for directory making to be inside of NeoVim. Um, but let's open it up and let's say like, oh shoot, well, I kind of meant for bin to be out for some reason. Um, then I would actually open up Yazi, press R, type in out, and then I'm done. To create a file, I would probably just open up Yazi again, go down to the bottom, and then make my main.c file here. Um, and then, you know, do my random C boilerplate here. So just int main return zero like this. Um, and then if I wanted to create, you know, maybe like I, I wanted to create a header file, I would again use uh, Yazi to go to include and I would just create my header file here. So I don't know, something.h and let's just say like void foo. And so now we just have a very, very simple header file here. Let's go ahead and create the source file to go with that. So I would go back out into source and then I would create my um, something.c here. Um, and then I would include the something.h here. And you know, because of the way that the Clang LSP works, I have to make a compile flags.txt. Now it's very common in C to be jumping back and forth between two files because there are header files and C files. And there are two different ways that I would do this with my file navigation techniques here. Uh, one of them would just be to open a vertical split. And then I would just have this header file here um, and let's say I wanted to add another function called bar. So I would just make a function called bar here. I would go back over to the something.h and I would actually, um, you know, make this bar function here. Um, and this is okay. This is totally fine. And especially because I have um, window navigation remaps to just control and then H, J, K, and L. It makes it very, very nice to just teleport between these two here. As you can see, as you can see, I can navigate pretty darn quickly. Okay, but then let's say that I wanted to also be editing something in my main file here. Well, I can go to my main file. Let's say I wanted to actually use those uh, those things that we're implementing here. So I'm going to include something.h um, and then I'm just going to call foo and I'm gonna call bar. Okay, well, that's fine, 
but now we have this issue where I have three files. And so what could I do? I mean, I could go to something.c and have something.h here, and then I could do a regular split. And then down here, I can do main.c. And now we have this weird setup here where I have three. And whenever I have three files like this, this is kind of my indicator of like, I need to stop splitting my panes because three files is too much. Like I like having just one split. One split means I can just do this. I can just go quickly. Vertical splits means now I kind of have to change my hand position. Um, I also have very little real estate for, for two of them and then a lot of real estate for one of them. So it's kind of unbalanced. Um, so I don't really like it now. I mean, of course you could do another vertical split like this and get crazy and then you have three splits, but you know, depending on your monitor resolution, you don't want that because if you have not enough space, as you can see, it doesn't really get very fun to work with. So my solution for all of this is to use telescope and marks. So what I could be doing here is I could just, you know, shrink this down back to one here. And then what I could do is I could just go to the main and I can do some editing in main. I could go to something.c, I could do some editing in something.c, and then I could go to something.h and do some editing in something.h. Um, but of course this is a little bit slow. So what I would do is I would pick these files and I would just go to that file and I would create a mark. So I would do M capital A. Now I've actually marked this file and the capital letter means that it is the entire file. I'm actually going to be changing buffers whenever I go to this mark, not just changing cursor location. Um, and so I would do that and then I would go to something.h and then I would also mark that one with s um, and then I would go to something.c and I would mark that one with d. And now what I can do is I can just use single quote a, single quote s, single quote d and I have all of them on my hotbar. So there you go. So now what I would probably do in a realistic situation here, I'm editing the header file here and I'm editing the source file here and I'm also in my main. So I'm, I'm in main, I'm making some edits here. Um, I have foo here three times. Um, so let's actually edit what foo does. Let's say foo actually takes in a size T num like this. And then let's say that it does this uh, and we print out the number like that. Oh, and it shouldn't be a size T, it should be an int 32 T like this. And now what we'll see is we have um, conflicting types for foo. Um, so what we do is just switch over here and just say that this takes in an int 32 T um, like that. Um, and then I can import it over there instead of over here. I can then just go back to my source file here. And as you can see, I have too few arguments here. So I can just get rid of these and I can just pass in, you know, a couple of these. Um, like this. And so as you can see, this is how I'd probably do it. I'd have one stagnant file on the right, which would probably be my header file. And then I'd have my actual file I'm working on. And so I think this is a better way to do things. It's not as visually appealing. And especially you can get lost if you don't remember your marks, which is where something like Harpoon would come in. I've honestly found that I don't really get lost on my marks because I kind of limit myself to only use three marks at a time. Um, anything more than that, and I think I'm getting a little crazy and I'm doing too many things at once and I need to like chill out on a, you know, philosophical level and just think, do I need to be doing all this at the same time? Um, that's kind of just my own thing though. And of course, if you actually don't remember what your marks are, you can always look up what they are with the marks command here. And as you can see, these are what all my marks are. I didn't set most of these. These are just like auto filled ones because I only really use a couple of them. So with that being said, that is how I do file navigation in NeoVim. Hopefully you enjoyed and you found something useful in this video. Um, if you did consider liking the video and subscribing um, and also consider supporting me on Patreon so I can continue making videos like this. Um, my configuration is linked in the description if you want to check it out, but just keep in mind that it is my configuration. So it's, you know, pretty sloppy and I'm not accepting pull requests anytime soon. Uh, but thank you very much for watching. Have a good day. See ya.